you can generate 3D animations using ChatGPT. And this is blowing my mind. I asked it to write the code for a 3JS scene of a marble bouncing on the floor. And I think the result is amazing. See for yourself. So it starts by setting up a scene, uh, creating a camera. So that's kind of the background stuff that it has to do before it can actually fill the scene with, uh, with objects. It sets up a renderer and um, adds this render object to the, to the HTML document. So that's all the background stuff. And now it actually creates the marble, which I think is fascinating on, it own, that on its own, that it recognizes that it needs a sphere to represent a marble. And it adds this to the scene. And it also creates the floor with a plane geometry. It also creates a, a floor material. And um, it also recognizes that it has to rotate the floor because by default, the a plane will start vertically. So it rotates the floor by 90 degrees here. And then it creates a velocity vector and an animation loop. And in each loop iteration, it adds the velocity to the position of the marble to make it move. Next, it checks whether the marble touches the floor. I mean, look at that. It looks at the position of the floor and the radius of the marble to check when, the, when they touch. And um, if they touch, it, it flips the velocity to make it move up again. And then that's super amazing to me. Like, read this, reduce the magnitude of the velocity slightly to simulate friction. I didn't even ask for that. I'm blown away. Of course, I had to try the code. The only things I added were import statements to um, import the 3JS library. And I also added orbit controls, which allows you to move the camera with the mouse. And as you can see, um, the floor plane is there but we can't see the marble anywhere. So something is not quite right yet. But the cool thing about this JetGPT is that you can uh, continue to ask questions to improve your code. So I wrote, I can see the floor, but I can't see the marble. How can I fix the code? And, you know, it tells me essentially the camera position might be a problem, which is a good answer. It can't know that I have already messed around with the camera. So um, this would certainly have been an issue if I didn't change the camera position already. When I looked at the code again, I saw what the actual problem was. The velocity was way too high, at least for a slow minded human like me. Maybe that's not the AI's fault. Um, but also the velocity was pointing upwards. So the marble starts climbing up and never actually touches the floor. To make it bounce, we have to invert the initial velocity. And here it is, the first AI marble bounce. Um, of course, I was not really satisfied yet because it only bounces once and then kind of flies off into space. Instead, I wanted it to uh, bounce multiple times. This time I wrote, actually, I had to make the starting velocity negative and smaller. Now the marble bounces once, but then it continues to fly up. I want it to be pulled down by gravity instead. And boom, it tells me how to add gravity to the system. In order to make the marble fall under the influence of gravity, you will need to add a gravitational force to the marble's velocity on each frame of the animation. This will cause the marble to accelerate downwards each frame, which will make it fall towards the floor. Here's how you can update the animation function. And it tells me exactly how I can update the function. It's wild. And now with the updated code, and some tweaked velocities and gravitational forces, we indeed get a beautiful bouncing motion. Boom. <laughs> of course, now we could continue to add some beautiful materials, some lighting, and make the scene look better, but I don't want to go into details here. But isn't that wild? I mean, that's the kind of code it writes in one go. 
If I would write code like this in one go without testing it in between, I would have probably made 10 mistakes in the same code, not just one like the AI did. And now imagine you put this AI into some iterative framework where it can see the result of what it has written, see the result of the program, and then make changes accordingly. This would be way more powerful without even making changes to the AI. I guess we're going to see that in the next months. Um, these are exciting times, but also really a bit scary, I have to say. Anyway, see you next time. <laughs> Bye.